In this video, we're going to talk about the five pros and the five cons of living in Bremerton, Washington, and we're getting started right now. I'm with Remax Exclusive. I'm a local real estate agent here in Bremerton, Washington, and this channel is all about living in Bremerton, Washington. So subscribe now and tap that little bell to make sure you're notified every time I upload a new video, which is weekly, to be sure to find out all about living here. So we're gonna dive right into five pros and the five cons. So the first pro is the weather. And I know you're thinking to yourself, but I thought it was Washington and it rains all the time. No, well, I mean, sometimes. We get about 50-ish, 48 to 52 on average, inches of rain a year, which is less than some parts of the country. There's uh, there's areas that get like 300 something inches of rain a year, and those places are like in Hawaii, which is nice, who wouldn't wanna live there, right? But um, on average, we only get about 50 inches of rain a year, which is doable, so, I like it. Our summers are phenomenal. Everything's green. Everything's lovely. In fact, today we are, let's see, it's the end of August 2021 and we haven't had rain in probably a solid two months. It's been great. It's been mid 80s. We had a couple of heat waves where it was over 100 for a few days, but uh, overall the weather is spectacular. We have really mild winters, um, which is kind of nice. So if you're from like a really snowy state, like in the Midwest, like Wisconsin or Northeast Connecticut or somewhere like that that gets a ton of snow, you're gonna arrive here and laugh at us at our winters. Especially when it, rain or it snows like two inches and they cancel school. <laughs> because we don't know how to drive in the snow. That's just, I'm gonna own it. We don't know how to do snow, so they cancel school and everyone stays home. The number one con might sound a little counterintuitive is the weather. Like, Cassie, I thought you just said the weather was a pro. Well, it is. On the flip side, we only have about 150 days of sunshine a year, which means that when it's not raining and it's not sunny, it's just kind of cloudy and just kind of cold. And I don't know if you're like me, but when it gets chilly like that and it's just like cold, it just like gets into your bones and you can't warm up. You take like three hot showers a day just to try to warm up and you're snuggled head to toe in beanies and slippers and everything trying to warm up. Or maybe that's just me, I don't know. I, I like the heat, I'm from California originally and so I really like the heat. I'm kind of a baby when it comes to the cold. So winter times, spring times can get a little, a little cold, a little dreary. It takes quite a while for it to warm up. In fact, we joke that summer doesn't even start here until after the 4th of July because in May, you're still waking up to 50 degrees and beans and gloves and the whole thing, just because it's cold and gray. We really cherish our 150 days of sunshine that we get every year. Pro number two is the traffic. So we are on the uh, on the beginning of the Olympic Peninsula. We're on the Kitsap Peninsula, which if you go a little bit farther north and west, now you're on the Olympic Peninsula. And so we're kind of not really close to I-5. We're about, you know, 40 miles away from I-5. and we are kind of spoiled with our traffic. There's really not a lot of gridlock, not a lot of traffic jams. The only traffic you're gonna see is um, like work related, like people getting off work out of the shipyard between 2.30 and four, and they're hitting all the gorse traffic around the corner of Port Orchard. That gets backed up for a couple miles every day. Um, and then occasionally the Hood Canal Bridge up north will open up because it's a drawbridge, it's pretty cool. Um, it opens up on a schedule and also um, it's on contract with the Navy to open up uh, to let submarines go through, come and go. So that's kind of cool. But if that's open, of course, traffic on Highway 3 um, in that direction, going northbound, is just stop, your, your car's off, you're sitting on the That's basically what it is until the bridge closes and you can pass. Con number two, traffic. I know, what is this turning into? Like if he said, she said, I don't even. How come the cons are also the pros and vice versa? So 
The traffic is a con in the sense that we're surrounded by water on so many sides and we have all these little micro peninsulas all over the county that there's really only one way to and from a lot of places. And so like if a freeway is closed or you have shipyard traffic or there's road construction or something like that, you're kind of stuck going the only route, you know, the only option there is one way or another. Um, for example, right now, the Kitsap County Fair is going on and there are roads blocked for that. So there's no traffic at that main intersection where the fairgrounds is, but then also really nearby, like within a one mile radius, there's road construction going on and those roads are closed. And so you're really detoured. There's only one way to and from because there's water to the east, there's water to the west, that's the Hood Canal, and there's all these little micro peninsulas. There's like the Rocky Point and the Marine Drive and the Finney Bay and all of these places that only have one way to and from. So if you're stuck behind like a garbage truck <laughs> or a school bus, um, you're gonna be there for a while because there's only one way to and from lots of places. Pro number three is the proximity to everywhere. Bremerton is located in such a prime location. You really couldn't get any better. So 12 miles due east is Seattle, and we get there by taking the ferry. We have a ton of ferry systems all up and down the Puget Sound. Seattle, super close. So if you wanted to take the ferry and go to like a Mariners game or a Seahawks game or a Sounders game, the stadiums are within walking distance of the ferry terminal. So like game days, it's kind of fun. People will be dressed like head to toe in blue and green because all of our team colors, baseball, football, and soccer, um, are all blue and green and uh, so everyone's dressed, you know, spirits and all that stuff. It's great. And the ferries are loaded and so people just walk on because from Bremerton to Seattle the ferry is free to walk on and they just hop off the ferry, go to the stadium and there's like tons of food and drinks in between the ferry and the stadium so you can stop and get street food, you know, like hot dogs or tacos or whatever. Or you can hop in a bar and get a drink before the game or whatever. Same thing on the way back. Um, you just catch an evening ferry and, and hop it on the way back to Bremerton. So that's pretty cool. Um, to the south, we have Portland. It's about two and a half to three hours, depending on your location on the peninsula. Um, to the east, excuse me, to the west, we have the entire Olympic Peninsula where there, there is Port Angeles, which has a ferry to um, Victoria, BC, Canada, which is really cool. Right now, I don't think it's running because of the COVID, but you know, as soon as it starts back up, that's a great like weekend vacation. Just take the ferry up there, stay in a little bread and breakfast and have a great time in Canada. Um, we also have the proximity to the coast um, on the west. So there's Pacific Beach, there's Ocean Shores, there's all these places. And Highway 101 that runs up and down the west coast there in Washington, there's like camping and RV parking and all kinds of recreational stuff all up and down the Hood Canal on the 101. So really, really great location if you love to do any kind of outdoorsy stuff, any kind of traveling. And then if you wanna go a little bit farther, there's um, Leavenworth in Eastern Washington. And if you're in the military, it's not that Leavenworth. It's actually a really great vacation spot. Um, really big in the wintertime. So like snowboarding and skiing resort and stuff and, and some cozy little vacationing there. Um, and then six hours, five and a half, six hours to Central Oregon is Bend, which is the outdoor Mecca of the world. It's got Deschutes River that runs right through it. It's super close. So the proximity everywhere and Bremerton itself, we are so self-sufficient on our own little peninsula that it's great to just kind of just take a day hike or you could go ice skating or you could do all kinds of stuff, um, any re anything really you can think of. Con number three is gonna be your cost of living. So Bremerton ranks a little bit higher than the national average as cost of living goes. We are about 50% higher than the national average, but we are almost half of the cost of living in Seattle. So if you're relocating to Seattle, you may want to consider living in Bremerton. Your money's going to go a lot farther. You could buy or rent for a lot cheaper than you could in Seattle. And we have these amazing commuter options. There's a fast ferry and there's a drive on ferry um, from several locations. So really anywhere you're living and anywhere you're going to, there's going to be a ferry next, you know, near that somewhere. And so that really beats sitting in traffic when you're driving into the city on a work day. Pro number four is our economy. 
our economy is actually really robust and really booming. We have um, the great fortune to be home to the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, which employs 30 to 40,000 people, not including the active duty members. So that's just civilians. Um, there's several locations throughout the county um, that the uh, Department of Defense employs civilians. So. Uh, Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, and then we have uh, Banger, which is the sub base. So there's Napac and Port Ops and all kinds of stuff going on there. Um, and then there's Key Port, and there's a couple other little places, um, pockets here and there. Uh, but Puget Sound Naval Shipyard is going to be the big one. So the presence of the shipyard and the presence of our active duty military keeps our economy so stable and so solid. And it's such a blessing because we are cushioned by that. By the military presence and they will always be coming and going and so there's always like rotation and housing and and this and that and it keeps everything in flux and it keeps everything just looking really good as far as the economy goes con number four is the sales tax so washington state does not have a state income tax so they have to make up for that somewhere so like when you go to oregon they do have a state tax so they don't have sales tax at all and you can't pump your own gas which i just think is really weird still no state income tax high sales tax so right now it's at nine percent and i don't ever see it going down so that means for every hundred dollars you spend you're spending almost an additional ten dollars in sales tax so that's kind of the trade-off of having a really good economy is having a high sales tax pro number five for living in bremerton washington is the outdoor recreation if you are outdoorsy you will just you're never gonna get enough. It's so great here. In fact, this morning, I just went on a four mile hike. We were out there for two and a half hours up Green Mountain, which has phenomenal views uh, once you get to the peak of Sinclair Inlet and the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard. You can see the green hammerhead. It just stands out like a sore throat. I love it. And then beyond that, you can see the Seattle skyline. And then to the west, you can see the Hood Canal. It's, it's phenomenal. It's such a gorgeous view. And today was such a beautiful day for it. So hiking, water sports in the summertime, skiing, wakeboarding, jet skis, wave runners, boating, fishing, clamming, all that stuff going on in the water. Silverdale has a row club, so if you're into rowing, you can join the club in Silverdale. Biking, wintertime has uh, snow skiing. Snoqualmie Pass is an hour and a half to the east. So if you're big into skiing and snowboarding, there's that. Horseback riding, there's tons of equestrian trails around here. In fact, you might have to get a dog just to explore all of the hiking trails that are here. They're, they're great. Con number five, and this is the big elephant in the room and everybody wants to know this when they're moving from out of town, what are the safest neighborhoods and what is the crime like in Bremerton, Washington? So I will say Bremerton does have its fair share of crime. There'll be um, links to public data in the description of the video. So this isn't my data, I'm definitely not steering. This is all public data and anybody can research this. There are some areas in Bremerton that have higher crime rates than others. Um, mostly those are gonna be the downtown areas. If you look at the public data, most of the crime is petty crime, like theft, stuff like that. So I wouldn't hang your hat on the fact that Bremerton is just a bunch of crime and just a bunch of, you know, dishonest people doing dishonest things. I've lived in Bremerton for most of my 21 years that I've lived here and I've never been a personal victim to any crime. I can't speak to personal experience. So coincidentally, of course, the areas with the higher crime are going to be the areas with the most affordable housing. It's just kind of a trade off that way. Um, and that is kind of going to be in your downtown Bremerton area, which is also really, really favored because of its proximity to the shipyard and its proximity to the ferry system. So, you know, it really depends on what you're looking for as far as where to live and what you what services you need around you. And then we'll just take it from there. So if you have any questions, be sure to uh, comment. I promise I'll respond. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. And we'll see you next week. Bye for now.